Hi, this is Yannick again. We left the we left the second volume of the video to uh, this part that is the homepage of the course, and this is volume three of this uh, series of videos explaining how Camilla works and what it is. Uh, this is the course homepage, and we're gonna quickly go through the tools of of the of any course, and uh, we're gonna figure out how to configure a few options inside the course which is through this um, option that's called settings and how to back up the course or create a copy of the course uh, with this uh, setting here okay so basically the when you enter the course or the interface in general is like this so you have uh, the main menu here that will allow you to go to different sections of the the platform you are inside a course that is called Camilo Tour, so it shows here. Uh, it's very important because this is a, a navigation element that will be reused uh, all the time uh, from, from now on. And this is basically the, the navigation that we called breadcrumb. So we're going to see later on how or why it's called breadcrumb. This is the introduction of the course. So you can uh, edit this. You can, you can just change the, this logo here, the message here. You, to do that, you can just click on the pencil icon here. And you can, for example, you can center this text. And you can change the color of the text itself. For example, we're going to pick that color. And then you can change the, the image using the online editor here. Uh, I can go inside my course and check for a few images. There we go. I can replace my icon and then maybe this uh, color is not right anymore. So I'm going to go back to, to black. I can save the intro text and that's it. That's the introduction of my course. So I can put a message here. I can set up a weekly schedule and that kind of stuff. Uh, as a teacher, I have access to all these tools, so there are at least 20 tools in here. Uh, there are more appearing as I enable plugins in later on. Um, there are three sections, authoring, which is the part that will let you build your course, interaction, which is the part that will let you do some interaction with your students, and administration, which is something that only appears to you as, an, as a teacher, uh, that allow you to do some additional things. So here we have in the authoring part, we have a course description section, which allows you to describe the course and this description will actually be structured and will be visible from the course catalog. The documents tool is usually the most used tool. So you can uh, enter, upload documents uh, directly inside the course. And uh, you can also if you, oh, did you see the, 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 the change here? So I entered documents, the documents tool, I went to upload documents. And so now I have the Camilo Tour um, title, which is which allows me to get back to the home page of the course. I also have the documents item, which allows me to get back to this page of a list of documents. And then when I enter a subsection, I get there. And if I want to go to the, to the previous step, I can just click here and I get to the higher your level of hierarchy. Um, so the documents folder helps me upload documents that I already have. I can create new documents here. So I can just click this option and create a new document. We're going to get back to this uh, very soon. Um, I can create learning path, which, which is basically a sequence of contents that is uh, built to lead the student in his learning. We have a links tool that allows you to create links to other resources outside this portal. The test tool, which allows you to create uh, some tests, some auto evolution tests or exams or whatever kind of type of test that you want to create. Uh, the announcement tool that allows you to send uh, a few announcements to your students by email. Uh, the assessment tool, which allows you to create um, assessments, yeah. the combination of, uh, of, of, of grades that are, that are obtained by your students. 
uh, you have the glossary that allows you to um, set a few words that uh, with the definition and then you can link them from the documents tool and you can students can see the, the full description you have the attendances tool which allows you if you are in a classroom or if you are online but you are measuring who participates to the to the course you might uh, want to check this one out the course progress allows you it's a little bit of a, a combination between the course description and the attendance tool so it allows you to make a, a kind of a table of contents of your course and link that to specific days or, or times of uh, where, where you will give a lesson to the students in the interaction section, you will find the agenda tool that allows you to create events. And also you can link these agenda tools to the announcements tool. So you can send those events by email to your students. The forum tools allow you, uh, tool allows you to create forums and, and interact with your students in an asynchronous way. The Dropbox tool allows you to upload documents in case your students are sending very big very large files and that uh, the email doesn't really fit this type of uh, of sending of, of 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 documents you have the users tool which allows you to subscribe new users to your course the groups tool which allows you to create groups of students that will work together on a, on specific tasks the chat tool, which is a small window that opens to chat interactively uh, in real time, sorry. The assignment tool that allows you to set up dates to give some kind of document or answer some kind of question. The service tool to get opinion from your students. The wiki tool, which allows you to do some collaborative uh, course teaching uh, methodology. The notebook tool, which allows students to take personal notes if, if they don't have uh, anything else to uh, take note with. So these tools all allow you to create a, a certain kind of, uh, of, of course following a specific methodology. But if you want to, you can hide any of these tools and just simplify a lot your course for your students. So it, let's say we, we're, we're hiding all these um, tools here. And then we'll, we'll, we're going to say, OK, I'm just going to offer the documents tool, the wiki tool, and maybe the forums tool to my students. So if we want to see the results of that, we can click on this button here that says Learn a View. And this will show me the course that, will, that the students will see. Uh, the, portal it, the, the portal itself is adaptive, so you can change the resolution of your screen. And it will actually. Um, degrade uh, gracefully as they say so here i can just show you reducing the size of the screen with firefox this is a very nice feature for that so you can see that it, it just takes another shape uh, depending on the size of the screen the menu changes to give you more content and all kind of stuff okay so getting back to the teacher view the only thing that you might uh, want to know now is how to configure your course. So for you've seen already how to hide some tools from the students uh, so they get don't get confused with so many options. And now if you go to settings, you'll find that you can change the language of the course, which is the language of the interface. Of course, it won't translate your content. You can change the category of the course. You can uh, pick a specific style sheet. So if you don't like the, the style of your course, you can just pick the red style and once the student enters this course he will get a specific style it's not recommended on, on large uh, corporate portals or institutional portals to change the style for every course that you get in because it confuses the student a little bit but you know maybe there are some specific cases where you you'd want to do that um, you can add a picture that will represent your course in the course catalog you can also define course access so you can pick between five options that will uh, dictate how students can or can't subscribe to your course um, if they can do that on their own or if you as a teacher have to subscribe them 
you have uh, the possibility to sh set direct links to uh, some specific part of your course so for example if you're doing uh, if you're using this portal as um, um, human resources examination center for example you can set up exams and then uh, give this link inside a job offer and you can just uh, the student will click on or the student sorry the candidate that will click on this link will get to the subscription form and we'll have to fill it and then it will be sent directly to the exam <clears throat> there are many other options you can set passwords to accept the, to access the course you have notifications that you can set up uh, to decide when or, or, or where you receive the the emails when a student uh, handles a task or or answers an exercise for example uh, you can change a, a few other uh, things but let's say that basically this is the screen where you will set up all the course related stuff um, you have a last option that is the backup option so if you get there you can take a backup of your portal of your sorry of your course this is only the course content so if i create the backup here and i ask to let me select the learning objects it will propose a list of items that i can save I can just open these and, and see the list appear. I can say select uh, all, for example, if I want all the content to be copied. Otherwise, I, I just unselect these and I can pick a specific event. And then if I click validate, it will generate um, a, a backup of this course. Okay, so basically that's it for volume three. And um, in the next volumes, we're gonna see a little bit more about creating content. Thank you.